the first step to transferring is doing what you're doing right now, which is research, because you need to figure out what school you need to go to, what the application process is, and how your credits are going to transfer. That's really important. So if you start planning that right now, it's going to make that a lot easier. So there's a couple of places on our website that are really important for you to get familiar with, and this is for any college or university, and that's the admission page, because that's going to tell you everything you need to do to apply, and then the catalog. So all the information that I'm going to talk about is going to be found in the catalog. So reading the catalog of the school is important. So I want to go through the admission process at Fort Lewis with you guys first. And so if you go to our admission web page, it gives you a little bit of the um, admission requirements, right? So transfer standards, you have to have a 2.4 GPA or higher. So that's really important for you guys. Um, none of the freshman stuff is really important because you're just going to be on a transfer. So it says click below if you meet one of the following categories. You're all transfer students. You have to have at least a C minus or higher in the class for it to transfer. And we only accept 60 credits from a community college. We accept 90 from a university. So if you do more than 60, you'll only get 60 transferring over. So that's really important for transfer students. Um, and then also if you're taking any sort of technical class, that could come just in as an elective. Those don't really count towards credits for um, like an actual course like a gen ed and then if you are taking some sort of like pre-college course like a transition course like sometimes people take those in math or writing that's not considered college level so that won't come over either as an as a course credit but that does that will play into your placement so if you're in like a pre-algebra class we're gonna see that you took a pre-algebra class and put you at the algebra level so it'll come into placement. You'll need your official transcripts sent over to Fort Lewis. And this is, um, you'll, you'll, have to be, you'll have to submit your ACT or SAT scores only if you've done less than 13 credits. So if you guys have, you're at 24 credits, you don't need to submit that. Just your um, official transcripts. And then you do, and you also have to submit transcripts from any other college that you've ever attended. And that's true for everywhere. There's something called academic dishonesty. And so if you don't send your transcripts then, and they ever find out, you could get in trouble for that. So even if you only took one summer class somewhere and you don't even think it's going to give you any credit, you still need to, to turn it in. And then you'll have to pay $40. Everybody has to pay a $40 application fee. And then these things are not required, but they're recommended if, for, like say you have a 2.3 GPA, um, then you should probably get the letter of recommendation in the essay. And they will look at that. So it's not this real hard, like you have to have that 2.4, but if you don't, pr be prepared to build like a stronger case of, you know, what's going on um, with that, like why you think maybe you would do better if you came here and how you could increase your GPA and plans to do that, things like that. So really what you're looking at for, for you guys being transfer students is your transcripts and your GPA. Get your transcripts in and have a 2.4 GPA. If it's lower, then you'll have to do this supplemental stuff. So it's a fairly easy process to transfer to Fort Lewis um, if your GPA is there. Because if it's at 2.4, all you gotta do is apply and you're pretty much automatically you know, accepted. So Now let's talk about once you get accepted, okay? So our general education requirements. So now I'm gonna go to the other page I said was important, that's the catalog. So over here, this is our catalog, our electronic catalog and on to the left side is like a kind of like a table of contents. Okay, so the liberal arts core, that's your general education courses that you guys are most likely taking right now. And then majors, options, and minors, this lists all of our majors and minors. Um, so I'm gonna go, let's talk about this liberal arts core because 
mainly that's what everybody is transferring over or will be transferring over to another uh, university. Um, so I'm going to open this PDF of our requirements. So there's two different ways that students will be transferring from San Juan. And one of those ways is if you already have your associates, right? Your AA or your AS. And then the other way would just be if you are taking some general education courses. Maybe you've only been here, you know, like one to two years. You don't actually have an associates, but you're still going to be transferring. So. I'm going to talk about these students first, okay? So everybody at Fort Lewis needs two compositions, one math, two arts and humanities, um, one history, one social science, Um, two, like physical sciences, and at least one with a lab, and then a PE, and then we have what we call upper division general education, and those are education for global citizenship courses, or we call them EGCs, so you need two EGCs. What is that again? EGCs? EGCs. So, um, and we'll talk about that later because nobody will, nobody in here will ever get an EGC. That's something that's specific to Fort Lewis. <coughs> so you'll never be able to transfer an EGC. They're, these are upper division. And upper divisions from a junior college don't transfer to Fort Lewis because generally junior colleges are 100 and 200 level classes. If you come in with your associates, right, all of your general, general education is waived. They're going to say, if you have your associates, you don't need to do any of this except for two EGCs. Because again, this is upper division. These are 300 to 400 level classes. So if you come in with an associates, this is all you'll have to do, plus whatever you have to do for your major, of course. But if you come in with one to two years, whatever you've done, say you've done your two comps and you've done a history and you know, you've done your math, you still have all these things that you're going to have to do, plus your major. And so a really good way to start planning for this and seeing, okay, is the comp that I'm taking right now going to transfer to Fort Lewis and be their comp is two different tools we have to do this. This is the first one. This is our liberal arts. Um, this is a sheet of all the classes that would be considered liberal arts. So let's take, let's take like a math class, right? I said you need one math. Now you, could, you could need more math if your you know, major requires more math, obviously. But for your general education, you just need one math. Okay, so these are all of the lists of the one math class that you can take that satisfies our general ed requirement. Okay, so I'm going to just navigate to a different page real quick that go back to um, admissions and then go back over here where we were looking at the transfer category because this is where you find a lot of the tools to see if what you ha are taking is going to transfer. Go down to this transfer equivalency table. <coughs> and so it'll navigate you to this page where it says choose the state in which your transfer institution is located. So we're in New Mexico. And then we're going to find the school which is San Juan College. And this is going to give me a table of everything at San Juan College and how it transfers to Fort Lewis. Okay, so if I'm going to, it, it's all alphabetical by the uh, course 
description here. So I want to go down and find math, right? And there's a, we accept a lot of courses from San Juan because so many students come from San Juan, right? So if you look at Math 160, your college algebra, is our college algebra, Math 110, which is on that list of courses we accept for general education. Bio 110, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Bio 112. That sounds really familiar. Um, which, is that like just intro to bio? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so this, this, is a, this is a good example, okay, because Bio 110 is non-majors biology. So that comes in as Bio 110, which is a, a science with a lab, like a general education requirement. See, here's Bio 110 here. But, but what it doesn't do is it's not, it wouldn't be the intro to biology for biology majors. So if you were a biology major and you were taking this Bio 110, it would come in as a general education requirement, but if you were a biology major, you'd still have to take another intro to bio class. So I'm taking 110 and then I can do that. Right now I'm in 121, biology 121. Yeah. Bio 121. So it's n so this is really interesting. Uh, this is a really interesting case that you bring up. Um, very special because if you notice, your intro to biology comes in as our bio 112. Don't look at this one because that that T that that T means that it's a it's just going to come in as a transfer elective. But what it really comes in is bio 112. Our intro to bio two. Okay, so your bio one comes in as our bio two. Your bio two comes in as our bio one for some odd reason. <laughs> so I think what it is is that, I mean, the, the, the records office do, doesn't do this stuff by mistake. I think what you guys do is you learn. It doesn't build. They don't build. It's like intro one and intro two. You, they don't necessarily build off one another. They're just different concepts. And you guys learn concepts in one that we learn in two and you you know so like we we found a way to do that so you're gonna come in with bio 2 credit but you're gonna have to go back and take bio 1 and you're gonna go well, why do I have to take bio 1 or I am in bio 2 but it's because you're you're gonna be learning different concepts well, I guess my question too is since I've done the 110 and now I'm doing the 121 and the transferring for um, science of the lab have I have completed that well, okay, so you're saying, so, so you're not a biology major, right? You're just saying, I've taken these. Okay, so you're saying is 113, and so 110 is definitely a science um, with a lab, and then 112 is a science without a lab, but you're getting 113 credit, so this would be a way that if you were the student I was advising and you were coming in, they're not going to automatically give that to you, but we have a form where I would say you're a really good candidate to do a, a transfer equivalency appeal. And it's really easy, it's just a form that says, I took this, but I want this credit to be my liberal arts, to meet my liberal arts gen ed and you submit it to the records office. And, and I've seen this case before, which is why I know that you, you would get both of your two sciences. Oh, okay. But you would have to appeal it okay. because of this flip-flop. Because we do have ways around that with doing the appeal form. If you think that something up here uh, doesn't look quite right or you want to try to get credit, there is a way to do that. But this is a good place to start. You know, it, this is a good place to say, I'm, I'm going to take a history next semester, but I want to make sure it's going to transfer as to one of Fort Lewis's histories. So I'm going to go to this transfer equivalency table and go, okay, you know, our history 101 is, you know, something like, and then, and use this sheet, because these are the only classes you can take. So that would, that would count towards it. So our history 101 is their history 151. And so it's up there. I know that if I take that one history, I'm going to get that one history credit.